All right, guys, we are back to back today. We are live again, search for Uru. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the previous uh, stream with uh, Brother Farai from the African Leadership uh, University. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So let's, um, let's get some more people in the chat room. And today I have the, the beautiful sisters from June, Africa, Chi Chi and June. And thank you so much for coming on and we connect. I connected with these sisters um, a couple of days ago uh, with the uh, previous live stream I did with uh, Malik Tribal, just discussing uh, incorporating African art and African aesthetics into home design. Um, it's something that's not as popular yet, but you know, just traveling to Africa and the amount of just beautiful art I've seen and not understanding why people don't invest in African and black art. It's just, it's, I don't know, it just, it confuses me. So the two sisters from June Africa reached out and I said, you know, you guys gotta come on and talk about your guys' design and what you guys do and how uh, you're offering a resource for people who want to, and a product and service for people who want to incorporate uh, African design into uh, their homes. So Chi Chi and June, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. So yeah, so I mean, just just tell us someone about the brand and the inspiration. Really, let's start from this. Let's tell us how you two met. Now you both went to UNC, University of North Carolina, in Chapel Hill, right? Yeah. So North Carolina. Yeah, and we actually go way back. We actually go back to high school. <laughs> okay. What 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 city in uh, North Carolina are you guys from? So I grew up in Raleigh. Okay. You know, Raleigh was voted like one of the best cities to live in in America, almost like one of the progressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I swear. I, I got a, I'll find an article, but it was voted like a great city to relocate to. So yeah, I was gonna I, investigate that. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta's cool, but Atlanta is uh, changing. You know, so and then the DMV. Where where in the DMV are you guys? Silver Spring, DC area. Okay, yeah, I was just up that way. In fact, I flew into Duelist when I came back from Senegal last uh, Sunday. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was up that way. So you guys linked up at University of North Carolina. Where, where were you guys' majors? I was English and also African and, and African-American history. Yeah, and me, myself, I was um, a global studies major with a focus on global health and environment as it relates to all things Africa, so things happening on the African continent. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So you guys linked together, high school, college, and then as far as the brand, what was the inspiration behind it? Like, how did that, how did it come about? Yeah, just to share a little bit about myself. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm June, and I am actually a mom, and okay. do this, Whole going through school experience with kids and um Chi Chi has always been by my side with them kids. She's definitely the godmother to my my children. And so we both kind of experienced together this um the hardships that come with I guess what we would we would call homemaking. Uh -huh. um, you know, like I remember going on to seeing commercials late at night. Um you run into commercials like for everything, everything from your um a water bottle for your dog mm -hmm. to you know like um 50 million way apple slicers to cut your apples right. but then it was just always so frustrating like well what about something to cut a yam or cut a plantain like why do i have to go out of my way to find something that represents what i need in my home um or like like we were talking about earlier if i want to find something that has African art, I have to go out of my way once again to find something that really reflects not just African art, but African art and what it is today. Like, right. I think a lot of people have this image in their head of African art just being, you know, like the spears and the just the, you know, just, you know, as you said, somebody's like holding a baby. And I mean, th that's awesome and that's cool. And we embrace that aesthetic and we'll also have that aesthetic on our platform. But African art is very, evolved and um has also contemporized i think a lot of people don't realize like 
happening. The continent has right. flourishing with so many ideas. Um, you know, I think all of the new ideas are coming from um, Global South. So, you know, we wanted to create something that represents that, represents both um, the wants that we want. For example, um, what do we want to see in our home, but also create things that have a functional or utilitarian use. Um, so not just what we want, but also what we need, because if you think about it, we talk, there's so much dialogue about the black experience and the struggles that we face in the outside world, but we've yet to really dive into the struggles we face in our own homes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, home should be a refuge, but as it is now, we're like, I have to watch my mom, you know, even when she's trying to like mash a yam, it's, it's a struggle, you know, so... (laughs) And I think, you know, it's, we, we want to get to a place where we're homemaking, we're changing the status quo of what um, homemaking looks like, because we are homemakers, and, and that's what June Africa is all about. Okay. How many kids do you have? You know, I have my son, and any minute now, he's probably going to come and crash uh, the video. That's what he does. He crashes the video. So any minute now, he's going to come in here with his T-shirt. He has a T-shirt and his drawers on. And, and crash the video. So, you know, how, how many how many kids do you have? I have two beautiful daughters who just started okay. the video right now. But thanks, Kim. Okay. You, she's got an online. Yeah, yeah he, he, he's going to barge in any minute now. That's what he does. But it's okay. It's, uh, you know, it's authentic. You know, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <don't mind. laughs> so how did you get Chi Chi involved in uh, June Africa? Like, what role do you play, uh, Chi Chi? Absolutely. So currently right now, I am the chief marketing officer. So um, a little bit about me, myself, I am uh, a return Peace Corps volunteer. So after I graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, go Tar Heels, um, (laughs) I decided like, you know what, if I have, if I truly have this deep appreciation for the motherland, you know, know, I'm going to have to go and like, right, exactly. Live it. So Uh prior to that, like I had studied abroad in Geneva, Switzerland, and it was interesting because I was really focusing on all things international development. And like, there was just this narrative, like how can we as Westerners like go in and and fix all things wrong? And um, I figured that the best way to... (laughs) Guys, go ahead and continue. Give me... 20 seconds, but go ahead, go ahead. So the best way to truly be able to um, understand what was really happening on the ground, you know, was to go. So, and I I had always, you know, when I was in high school, I studied Spanish, but for some reason I was just really drawn to the French language. And so I decided that I was just going to break away from the world of Spanish and um, I had enrolled in French 101, and then when I went to Geneva, you know, I was immersed, you know, in this Francophone culture, but it wasn't until when I went to Burkina Faso in 2012, and I was there for about a year and a half, it wasn't until when I went there that I was like, wow, like, this is, so this is Mom Africa, like, just the, the culture is just so rich, so beautiful, the art, the hustle, the drive, um, really, it truly shaped you know, it helped to shape who I am today. You know, even this just this spirit of entrepreneurship, all things social entrepreneurship. Um, I would say that it all goes back to that that short time that I spent um, in the village. I was in a tiny little village that was about an hour away from, um, you know, the far east of Burkina Faso. And Burkina, for those who don't know anything about Burkina Faso, it's a tiny little landlocked country that's surrounded is bordered by five different West African countries, Togo, Mali, Benin, Ivory Coast, and um, or Ghana, yeah? And um, yeah, so also we have our graphic designer, Brother Ahmad, on the line. So I guess, <laughs> hey Ahmad. <laughs> yes, we've been so thankful. Oh, uh, we can't hear you. <laughs> Okay, all right. See how, how random that was? He wanted a pillow. So, you know, he wanted to come in and ask for a pillow. So I had to get him a pillow. 
So uh, now I see you guys had a graphic designer on as well, Abdullah. Correct? Yeah, we can't, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. You probably have to uh, do this: uh, reboot your computer, or just close out the screen and come back and come back on. But you probably have to reboot the uh, computer because we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, Shay, appreciate it, family. Thank you. Let's see if we got any questions in the uh, in the chat room. But yeah, so now I know. And, and sorry about the interruption, but you guys were you were just discussing your time in Peace Corps in uh, West Africa. Yeah. Now, June, have you been to Africa yourself? Yeah, we're actually both um, of African descent. I mean, okay. we're, we're all of African descent, but right. we're first generation American. Um, so my background is Liberian and also Iranian. Um, my father is Liberian and I was actually born in Liberia, West Africa. Okay. Uh, I didn't spend much time in Liberia because th there was a civil war. Charles, um, Taylor, Charles Taylor and him. Yeah, unfortunately, but I mean, the story has come full circle for me. I'm actually just finished law school and I focused heavily on um, um, researching um, international war crimes and also, you know, the rhetoric behind that. Um, also do some immigration law. So definitely uh, my connection to Africa has become full circle. Um, I have been back to Liberia um, and I, I'm just so invested in, in uh and also finding creators, not just from the U.S., but also from the continent mm -hmm. to onboard onto our platform. Because as um, she had mentioned earlier, um, how important the value of social entrepreneurship is not just important to us. We want to also create a platform where that can be an asset to other creators in the diaspora as well. So one thing that we encourage anyone to do is to get in contact with us on at Shop June Africa or JuneAfrica.com. We have um, inventor and creator submissions. If you are a creator in the diaspora, um, connect with us. I mean, even if you don't have a fully fledged idea, um, the whole point behind uh, June Africa, as I mentioned before, like we would watch an as seen on TV commercial or something like, or, or you know, walking through bed and bath and beyond, they mm -hmm. have ways to bring um, inventors and, and creators on board and to uh, take their idea and take it to market. And we want to get to a place where we're doing that as well. So right now it's a very collaborative experience, but please submit your ideas. Um, we're always looking for new and innovative ways to display Africa, because at the end of the day, this is not just about our Afropolitan experience, our African experience. This is about um, various experiences throughout the diaspora that ultimately informs what it is to be Afropolitan. Okay. Now, are you now are you guys familiar with Afropolitan? Uh, the uh, it's like a nightlife. Uh, uh, very familiar, actually. I used to be a, an event planner for. I think okay. You're referring to Afropolitan cities. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. So, have you been to any of their events? Because they have. I, I've been to the one in Atlanta, and it, it it didn't really pop off like they were expecting it to. So they they kind of put it on hold. Well, it is a startup, so they're still working to, you know, spread the word um, and just to get that buy-in. But um, I lived in Baltimore City for the last three years prior uh -huh. to getting to the, um, the Silver Spring. And while I was out there, um, you know, it just speaks to what June was talking about. You know, it's this concept that, like, you know, what it means to be Afropolitan. Anyone who feels some sort of a connection to Mama Africa, the continent, uh -huh. Anyone who, you know, you kind of, like me, I was born in America, but you know, I had that experience on the continent. Or people who, vice versa, born in Africa, relocated to the US, you know, they're not just, let's say you're born in Nigeria. Once you step outside of that comfort zone and you step foot, you know, on another continent and another, even if it's another country within the continent, you, you know, you ultimately become exposed to, New cultures, new languages, new cuisine. Yep. So, and that actually brings me to a point. If I can jump in, but um, oh, go ahead. It's the, yeah. the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> seriously, but seriously, it's it's. I mean, uh, thank you for coming on. I mean, whatever you guys need to discuss, cover. I mean, it's it's all about June Africa. Yeah. So, speaking to what she just brought up, um, we're trying to create products that speak 
not just to being African, but what we call Afropolitan. Okay. Um, because we're aiming towards um, creating products that also have that utilitarian, youthful vibe. Like if you're someone who, like yourself, is always traveling, like you need to be able to get up and go and take your stuff with you. Um, it needs to have that functional, contemporary use, but also have that African aesthetic. So um, we brought a couple samples. Um, oh yeah, please share. One thing that we well, are, see, what I was going to ask, you know, at Afropolitan, they have the vendors uh, where you guys could sell your product. Did you guys ever do that at all, or? Well, we literally just launched on October thirtieth, which also happened to be National Dashiki Day. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're you're correct because even when I worked as an event planner, um, in in Baltimore for Afropolitan Baltimore, it was all about helping to small businesses, black owned right. businesses, people who, you know, people of color, people maybe of African descent that have their own products that they're really looking to bring to market. So we are looking to tap into that that resource. Right. Okay. And this is. So so is that is this the mud cloth wall um, situation? It is. It's a okay. it's a peel and stick wallpaper. Okay. Uh, and just to tell you a little bit about the design, we took actual authentic fabrics and digitized them into a design. So you do have that um, that authentic um, t um, uh, relationship with with African design. It's not uh -huh. just oh we're just you know giving you whatever. We want to keep right. the city. A part of our platform um, but it's a peel and stick wallpaper so it's literally like a giant sticker okay uh, so and that's really useful because it's totally removable and reusable so if you're somebody who's always on the go or you don't really have time to like you know put wallpaper up this is the perfect um, tool for you because at the end of the day you get good quality I mean it literally feels like a fabric it's completely woven um, but but literally you can put it on by yourself you peel it off you stick it on and now you have that aesthetic in your home without the work right um, you need to move or, or or redo the wallpaper you can um and you won't have any damage on your walls like a lot of a lot of young people we live in apartments we don't necessarily own our homes just yet i mean <laughs> crossing fingers that okay. is so home ownership is important i it's mean very important you guys buy a home yes so while prices are going up. So <laughs> I know I, I know Georgia here in Atlanta, prices are going back up uh, to where they were back during the mortgage fraud right. uh, era. But this is it's not it's real this time. It's not fraudulent. So make sure you guys own and get a home as soon as possible because these rents are out of control. Yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But for our apartment dwellers, you know, sometimes it's important. Sometimes you can't paint or you can't do this and that and I mean if sometimes it feels so restrictive because you're not able to really express this I mean I know some people who their landlords don't even allow them to put nails in the wall to hang up a painting yeah see me I fuck I'm, I, I got wall art mm -hmm. all type stuff yeah we, Abdul we hear you now okay, cool, 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 cool. yeah and this is the graphic designer behind yes. <laughs> thank y'all yeah yeah I'm sorry I, I, Greetings, y'all. I didn't. Um, I don't know which point at which point I joined y'all in. I know that um, last time I had some issues with the audio, so I wasn't. Um, I kind of we kind of jumped around a little bit, but yeah, just yeah, continue, if y'all. Yeah, so now we're just going into detail about the uh, wall art, the uh, mm -hmm. the wallpaper. So the uh -huh. removable wallpaper that won't mm -hmm. destroy your walls, so you won't lose your deposit, which is important. <laughs> right. Right. Which is important, important. So actually, I um uh, in Mali where uh, the the mud cloth is made. I've actually been there and seen them make it in a it's a city called Jenne, uh, where the great mosque is. So I've seen that. In fact, on one of my videos, uh, there there's a I think there's a video of it. I have it on on my page, so you guys can check that out. But yeah. Um, and then I'm, I'm looking on the side. I see the Nefertiti uh, wallpaper art, the wall decal, the Nefertiti one. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, I see the King Tut. Yeah. I guess you have the Horus. I love the uh, mud cloth. Uh, and we have different cloth. colors. We have a mustard color. Okay. Um, for those who have 
a deep appreciation for, you know, just like neutral colors. Um, it looks kind of goldish, bronze. We also have a light pink. We call it millennial pink. That's the new trend. So, like, we try to keep things trendy, but, you know, still authentic. Uh-huh, it's nice. It's really perfect, especially um for um you know, have a baby girl at home. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, your nursery have, I mean, we should be asking ourselves, are our nurseries reflecting uh -huh. what experiences we want our children to have? Um, we also have an Ankara print, but you can see all these different um, these different styles on uh, www.jinafrica.com. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm looking at the site right now. Yeah, we just want to give you guys an example because we're taking um, we're taking authentic prints and, and we're we're contemporizing them into something that you could see on your wallpaper um, or in your homes. And then I see you guys have the uh, ornaments too for the Christmas tree. Oh yeah, yeah, They're beautiful. Let me grab them. Yeah, grab grab some of those. I'm looking at them right now. So people, you have your Christmas tree. You need to decorate your Christmas tree. We have African inspired. It's JuneAfrica.com. Let me put the link in the uh, chat. In addition to that, please, please, please open up your phones, your computers, follow us, shop June Africa on Instagram, shop S-H-O-P, June Africa, J-O-O-N, A-F-R-I, or, yes. Yeah, I guess that's really yeah. important. The spelling of our name is June, J-O-O-N. Uh -huh. um, that actually reflects... A little bit of my um, Iranian background. So June in Farsi means my dear. And so it actually translates to my dear Africa. And um, so we wanted to incorporate that multicultural vibe. Um, I don't know if on the site you can see some of our dashiki wrapping paper. This one's a little. But yeah, we have, all, we have all types of things. I mean, we have, we're trying to also like cater to not just decor, but um, utensils that you use in the kitchen i think i talked about that earlier um in my house we make a lot of and i'm sure in a lot of different homes um we make things like meat pies beef patties empanadas things like that uh -huh. we have um, yeah we have a tool where you can literally use the bottom to cut out the dough wow yeah you use the top to fill in you place the dough and you fill it in you literally press it together and then you get a perfect meat pie or empanada beef patty every time. Hmm. Now, somebody in the chat room said, and, and Jean, I need you to go into detail about this. They said, make sure that you have a good intellectual properties attorney. Attorney, Why is that, Jean? Um, do, you, do you guys have any idea why? But he's saying that in the chat room. I don't, you know, I, you know there's just mud, it's mud cloth. I mean, there's no, um, um, what's the word I want to use? Copyright. Or whatever on mud cloth print mm -hmm. is, is mud cloth, but I guess we'll get back to me in a second. Uh, Perhaps he's speaking more so um, to the patenting of the ideas. Yeah, but it's I mean it's just a car and African print. I mean I don't know how you could maybe a specific design that you guys might want to use that you want to uh, patent or copyright yourselves that you want specifically. But I don't know. He, I guess, I guess he'll respond back. And uh, oh, so you just want to shout out your sister? Okay, I guess he wanted to shout out his sister. I don't know. But, but go ahead, continue. Um, oh, Abdul. So, so how did you guys hook, uh, connect with uh, Abdul? Um, uh, Ahmad. Is it Ahmad yeah, or Abdul? It's Ahmed. Yeah. So oh, man, I'm sorry. How so, did you guys so, with Ahmed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's kind of a story that uh, involves uh, Chinyonye and, my, and myself. Um, uh, we were I, um, a friend, a mutual friend of ours, actually linked uh, me with her um, through Facebook message, essentially saying that you know the, um, there's a, a black startup looking for something to the effect of a creative director, um, looking and I guess the needs that they had matched uh, some of the things that I offered, or some of the things that because the person who knew was the mutual friend was actually a student of mine in the graphic design course that I taught. So I guess she figured, you know, I'd be a, you know, a good fit for that. So um, uh, June and uh, Chinyonye met with me at my job probably, I want to say, ooh, three and a half, four months ago at this point, maybe, okay. maybe a little less. And, uh, you know, they outlined what they wanted. They outlined a basic uh, and brief mission statement of what they wanted to uh, bring about by way of June Africa, um, the services that they wanted to provide. 
and the, uh, the you know, the, the idea and kind of the ethos behind the brand. And um, it's something that appealed to me. It's something that I think is very important. And it's something that um, I have uh, outside of the, the graphic design piece. I do have a little bit of uh, an experience with that. So um, so we ended up linking up. And uh, as things have progressed and as time has gone on, uh, uh, we found different ways through which I can, you know, apply my skill set to the June Africa brand. And uh, it's, the rest is history. Okay. Yeah, I can't speak enough about how instrumental Ahmad has been to our platform. I mean, we came to him with these ideas and he knew all not put it, just put it, and put and put it together. Yeah, I mean yeah. not just how to put it together, but also like he has such amazing ideas about the creative um piece, the branding piece, how you know, like, oh, we want to get this item, but we wanna try to source it black owned. He has the information, you know, he's really plugged in, so we have Nothing but appreciation. I'm sure he's coming out with his own platform soon as well. Um, but yeah, this this I mean, our um, collaboration with Ahmad is is very representative of the level of collaboration we're seeking. So again, any uh, creative designers or graphic designers, or I mean, even the person with the intellectual property law sister. I mean, <laughs> contact. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Jean, uh, put your. Um in fact, email me, Gene. Email me the contact information to your sister, and I'll make sure uh, June and Chi Chi get it. So make sure you guys get that to me. Now, as far as collaborating or reaching out to, I don't know, major department stores, uh, have you guys started that process somewhat? I saw I was in Whole Foods last night here in Atlanta, and there was a brother selling his homemade, uh, like barbecue sauce, like condiment, called oh, wow. Num Nums. Yeah. It was good as hell. So I <laughs> reached out to like, I don't know, Walmart or uh, I don't know, TJ Maxx, uh, Nordstrom's, I, I don't know, these major department stores, uh, Barney's of New York. I don't, I mean, have you guys started some of that process? Or are you just going to keep it uh, where I have to come directly to you to get your products? So, yeah, that's an excellent question. I think the important thing for us right now is to have more control of the quality and also to make sure that the creators can get the biggest percentage possible, um, aside from like producing the materials um, and marketing costs. Um, so right now we want to keep it very uh, uh, centralized to our platform as a platform that not only has these items, but also um, anyone in the community that uh, or has an appreciation for the Afropolitan aesthetic can come on board and have a, a positive experience. So, I mean, I'm, I think that at some point in the future, certainly th that's something that we're going to look at, but for the time being, I think control quality and assurance is the most important things that we can provide to both our consumers and our creators. Okay. I'm doing that now. Ahmad, you say Ahmed, you say he has some projects you're working on. What uh, what do you have going on? Um, so I'm actually in the middle of a a, a brand overhaul, so to speak. Um, we're at we're in. I um, uh, I will be including a lot of the different facets of services that I provide. You know, as a creative director, graphic designer, multimedia content developer, um, and bring them all under one roof. Um, similar in 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 its own way, similar to what June Africa uh, aspires to do with um bringing in different um you know, artisans and things like that to an online platform um, to basically um, offer services dealing with anything and everything, uh, you know, print, digital, um, film, things like that, those kinds of services that I offer, even down to the, the educational piece, um, you know, uh, uh, doing contract work with public schools, you know, teaching um, entrepreneurship, basic computer literacy, and graphic design as a trade, um, not just as an art. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that are going to be incorporated in uh, in that piece, and I'm looking to uh, do a series of a uh, series of events, both online and in person. Um, I said Siri, and my phone acted up. <laughs> 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 a series of events um, online and in person uh, to culminate in the launch of that. Um, you know, uh, hopefully beginning in down Valentine's Day of 20, uh, 2018 and continuing on. Um, so, you know, naturally, as with, you know, brand that's looking to establish itself out, you know, the name is still going to be under wraps for right now. Um, but that's the, that's the move for the time coming. Cool. Now, did, uh, June, did Chi Chi get with you in regards to some of the ideas I gave her in, in, in regards to marketing or reaching out to uh, expanding the brand? Yeah. 
Um, so right now we're researching that the whose account? Is house, that? house, yeah. Get on house, get on house. You guys do well on house. Definitely. So we're, we're researching that. Um, trying. We've made an account just trying to understand a little bit more about how to sell on house. Um, but um, I think for now we're we're on we're on the June Africa platform. We're working on our search optimization so that you guys can find us a little easier. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, we're, we're getting ready to hit the ground. I mean, at, at the moment, our main focus is we have an upcoming trip to Africa. Wait, where are you guys going? <laughs> when, when, when are you guys going? When? Uh, right after New Year's, we'll be in like, okay. Nigeria. I'll be, at, um, I'll be in Ben Togo and Benin. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, 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 but I plan on going to Niger next year because I want to go to uh, Benin City. Okay, yeah, Benin City. The Niger Delta. So I want to I want to make sure I get there um, soon before before something. I don't know. Nigeria is just a weird. Like it's a lot going on in Nigeria. You're, you're, you're right. You know, so I want to get there before something pops off. It's just Nigeria is just one of those. It's just is a lot going on. So. Oh, I, I'm a war baby, so I'm a little less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. My mom's always like, you need to be more careful. I'm like, mm, I'm trying to explore, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, also, too, reach out to, uh, like, are you familiar with Wayfair.com? Yes, I, I love Wayfair. Um, I just love how, how easily searchable it is. And there's a lot we can learn from those brands as well as far as, search optimization and um, you know how to speak to our customers well um, and I think that we have a value add to offer as well to them um, you know we're, we're reaching an audience that um, that has not really been explored and I and I think that it's time that we start putting a voice behind this movement of recognizing us as homemakers I mean seriously we're tired of seeing the same commercials with the same people <laughs> same products i mean you know we need to move there's a we already have a thousand ways to slice these apples there's right. other here okay i mean how am i gonna slice this papaya right. that's what i'm trying to understand also too uh and, and they're not that expensive for from what i understand invest in uh instagram and facebook ads yeah right thank you so much yeah we, we're definitely taking all of that into consideration um right now we do have a donate button on our site just because um raising funds to get this marketing out and get it done correctly is definitely difficult but that is our value add so we do need to focus on that um in addition to the product development and ultimately we can't do this without our community so we appreciate any form of support um that the community has to offer you know we're listening we're listening to the needs and we're trying to respond so the so the donate um option is on juneafrica.com yeah it is if you go to the bottom left hand corner um of our home page you will see a time a, a beautiful <laughs> yellow donate icon just click it okay. Please click it help any it doesn't matter donation donation of any kind uh -huh. very helpful so yeah and then, and then of course, and are you guys going to set up shop at one of the Afropolitan events? Absolutely. We've already reached out, so we're looking into it. Okay. Yes. Do, you, do you know uh, Harriet? She's out here in Atlanta. She, she, I know at one time she was doing the... Uh, yeah, she's very good friends with one of the other event planners. I think I've met, yeah, I've met her. Yeah, yeah, so I know Harriet real well. She's out here in Atlanta, so it's just, it really didn't get off. And see, this is what I tell, this is, what, this is what's weird about Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of black faces, mm -hmm. but no culture. But see, that's mm -hmm. the, I think that, you know. And, so people, and, I, and when I tell people that, they don't, it goes over their head yeah. until, you know, you guys start offering products like you have. And they're like, no, I'd rather get, you know, some Gucci, right. uh, Gucci or Louis Vuitton uh, bedspread. You know what I mean? Or, you know, whatever is popular mainstream that's what they're gonna go for and so and again that people when i say that they're like no what are you talking about that's not true i'm like listen like man that's what i'm trying to tell harry like there's a lot of black faces in atlanta mm -hmm. there's a large african community in atlanta but it's just there's really no culture in atlanta outside of like that oh we must overcome <laughs> you know civil rights and uh trap music 
I hear you. No, you raise a very good point because like I said, I was in Baltimore City for the last three years working as an event planner for Afropolitan cities. And that was the ultimate challenge. The ultimate challenge, like people will go out of their way to get in their car, drive an hour all the way to D.C. just to go to like, you know, a club where it's just on and popping, where they're playing that trap music. And, right. all that and I'm not saying that, like, you know, that shouldn't be done. But um, to your point, like the overall mission and like the vision here is that we can't just continue to operate in our subcultures. Like there's right. a beauty to be had in unification. Like. I'm not saying leave your own, leave your kind, go, go, you know, just like all I'm saying is dare to venture out and to explore, you know, other cultures that really do comprise what we call the African diaspora. Right. Because there's so much, you know, it can, you can't, it can't harm you. Like there's no, yeah. there's no harm in education and learning. And um, I mean, you'll notice that there are a lot of similarities across you know, across cultures, and there isn't any one culture. Like, you know, like June mentioned, she's half Persian, half Liberian. I'm Nigerian, but I'm fluent in French. So I have this deep appreciation for, you know, my Francophones. Like, anybody who's from, like, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, like, there's just, I really do feel like a, like we all are citizens of the world. Um, and, no, like, I definitely, what you, what you said resonates. And I think to also to that point, um, you know, it's also our responsibility to listen to what the community is saying that they want or um, what's what's preventing them from um, exploring. And I think um, that's what's so important to us about making sure that everything has that contemporary look and use because, um, you know, I think people have this image of Africa and African art as being so, I mean, in some ways outdated or it's just seeing this same images over and over and over. I don't, think, I don't think they have it. I don't think people know what African art is. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's what we're trying to bring. We're trying to bring that awareness that no, there is a contemporary Africa and you're, it's probably more relatable to your interests than you could have imagined. And I mean, we're trying to break those barriers and you know, you don't have to imagine it cause we will bring it to you. We will show up in the club. We would show up in the chat club, you know, by this dashiki. Cause right. I mean, they're wearing, I mean, people are embracing a little bit more like the dashiki. Yeah, but they're embracing them fake dashiki. Or joints made in China. <laughs> made in China and India, it was uh, so bad. Yeah, I think that's like a big part of, um, right you know, so like in Africa's, um, I think that speaks to a big part of the, like as, uh, June uh, spoke on a little bit earlier, um, the utilitarian aspect of what June Africa brings to the to the fold. It's like, um, sure, you know, uh, aesthetically wear these dashikis, you know, aesthetically wear these, these, the head wraps and the prints and things like that. But, you know, let's keep the, the source of those different things, the source of those prints, the source of those fabrics central in the conversation. Let's not wear the image and cut out the source and cut out the cultural reference point from which it comes from, you know, the people who make it and the people whose culture it comes from. Um, you know, um, uh, Dinas, have you been to uh, Ghana? I, I, I'm, I, li I literally leave for Ghana for the first time. I leave Thursday, Thanksgiving oh, day nice. to go to Ghana nice. for the first nice. time. Um, hopefully at some point, hopefully at some point while you're there, um, in the in there's an area in the north where they actually where the actual kente cloth originates. The one I'm going. It's there. It's outside of Kumasi. I'm, yes, I'm exactly. there. Yeah. And so, and it's interesting. Because I was there in two, summer 2011, and um, it's interesting because I mean, you know, we talk a lot about like the the importance and the significance of like different symbols and different colors and whatnot. But I mean, it's broken down to even down to like. There are some colors you can't wear if you're not from a certain family or if you're not of a certain lineage or things like that. So when when people kind of cut that part out and make it a fashion statement, I think that's when part of the culture is lost, so to speak. And I'm sure that, you know, that uh, June, Chinonia and myself, we've had those conversations several times over. And um, so to your point, Dynast, about, you know, there being that external imagery, but no culture in what you said about Atlanta, um, I think that that's where June Africa and even, you know, initiatives that may not necessarily uh, duplicate the way June Africa does things, but maybe just like the thought process of saying, hey, you know, instead of just looking for the look, let's also bring in the authentic piece, too. Right. And I think that that's a big I think it's, it's going to be a big part of how June Africa appeals, you know, from a financial standpoint, because, you know, it is a for profit initiative, but also just kind of like the cultural responsibility factor was really what kind of drew me into uh, their mission statement as well. 
And once again, just to add a quick note, that's why, I mean, our platform really will be as good as our creators. Um, and that's why we're calling for creators because, I mean, we will have, I mean, the person from Mali, the person from, you know, Benin, they will ultimately have the most um, insight into what is authentic. I mean, we can research as much as we want and we will. Creators, they're in their communities, they know. Um, and they know what, you know, they know what appeals to people as well. So I think that going for us forward is um, to have that good, that good collaboration and relationship. And um, if you are, you know, someone in, is a creator, send them our way because we're trying to take art and, and move it forward in new innovative ways. Right. I can definitely connect you guys with somebody on it with some people on the continent because I'm I'm on the ground when I go. So, you know, I, I, I somewhat I somewhat travel as a tourist, but really I'm like like trying to research and figure stuff out and you know get contact. So I can definitely connect you guys with some people on the ground in uh, you know Senegal, Mali, uh, Namibia, uh, South Africa, Tanzania, Kenya. Uh, I've definitely got. Uh, some people there was someone asked a question in the chat room hold on one second uh no i'm i'm going to ghana on friday i'll leave on friday for ghana Ahmed, since you're in uh graphic design are there any um uh, like black owned i know this is kind of off sub, off topic no, but someone asked are there any like black owned video game designers or <sighs> um it's interesting when you when you talk ask and talk about video games because I think that there's an overarching uh, culture trend with video games. It's kind of shifting to like, e you know, seriously indie or seriously studio driven. And um, most of the people who I to answer to answer that question, I think that with the real question, the real question is about coding and who does certain kinds of coding. Um, because a lot of times those are the people who have the skill set to you know create like video games whether they be phone apps or like something that can get published to Xbox Xbox Live or PlayStation Network or whatever. Um, there's a certain skill set that's needed. And to my knowledge, um, I don't know any um, that are on that scale. I know people who have coding experience but haven't used it. Black people, you know, black uh, creatives with coding experience, but I don't know of any that have uh, used them to uh, take them to, uh, to who've taken them in the route of video games. Um, there's a collective here of there's a collective here in Baltimore um, with uh, a black people, um, black creatives that deal with coding. Um, but again, I haven't, I can't say that I know that they've dedicated that skill to video game design. Okay. And then someone in the chat room said, uh, "Have you guys reached out to the bookstore on North Avenue?" I yeah, everyone's place. Yeah, I've actually I'll we'll okay. get the trip there soon. <laughs> okay. So uh, June, have you guys reached out to to them? Uh, I think maybe she, uh, sorry, she just left for a second, um, but uh, maybe, is that this resource you shared with her before? No, this is something separate. Somebody uh, posted this in the chat room. Uh, if we haven't, we will. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, they, they were saying it'll be a good resource for you guys. Also, too, have you guys turned your uh, individual space into like a showroom uh, for June Africa? We're actually in the midst of that right now. Um, just and that's your wallpaper in the back, right? Actually, this is um, a stencil design that will be coming to June Africa soon, um, and this is actually a Moroccan stencil design. And so we're we're reaching from every part of Africa, and this is literally um, I painted this using a stencil and using two different color paints. That's so, paint. Yeah, that's literally that paint. Good. It's literally paint. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, it's easy and. The nice part about having paint, um, it's a different option for people who um, want to have a more customizable experience. Like if you didn't care for the colors we had with the wallpaper, I mean, literally pick up a stencil and um, choose your colors and, and make it make it pop, make that accent wall in your, in your home pop. So that's definitely an item that we're onboarding within the next month, hopefully, or uh, two months. So yeah, we have a lot of amazing things coming. Um, we're trying to be as innovative as possible. I mean, if you have a, a, an art design and you want us to turn it into a stencil, turn it into a wall decal, you know, we're about making art and making it functional um, and make it functional for your home. Um, and in addition, if you don't have, I mean, don't be shy if you don't have any graphic design experience. I mean, Ahmed was able to help us 
take actual cloth and turn it into wallpaper, you know, turn it into wow. gift wrap. So different wrapping paper options and we will collaborate with you and figure out like, um, this is your art. How can this be used or how could it be best displayed in another form, you know? So, um, I know, I know I'm, I might be thinking too far ahead. Are you guys uh, gonna get into apparel at all? It's possible. I mean, we have to I'm move just, it out. No, I'm like just... We have two sections coming up. We have a travel section coming up next month, as well as a kids section coming up, hopefully by the beginning of next year. Just keep a lookout. We have some really cool things coming in that travel section. Um, we might be adding apparel. I know we do want to add at least one swimsuit option to the travel section. So okay. seriously, if you are um, an apparel designer and you want to get in contact with us, you know, all that all that requires is how does this fit into our platform? How can we market it? And that's our job. You know, our job is to figure out um, the marketing component. So reach out to us. Um, we're all about collaboration. This is an evolving process and how we start may not be how we finish. So right. reach out. definitely. Yeah. So I know, uh, especially getting into that interior design space, as far as link connecting with interior designers and all that, that's, uh, that'll, that'll be a good look. There should be, um, I know in Atlanta in LA, there's like a, I forgot the name, but it's like a design center where you go, they have all the furniture, and, um, and I know you can kind of set up office space, like a small office space there for when interior designers come in and get their products for their clients. I mean, that might be a good look. Uh, just, you know, in the future, uh, having like your own spot there. So I can't think of the name of it in Atlanta. It's like a big uh, interior design center downtown. It's wholesale. <laughs> and like basically all the you know what i'm talking about or yeah because i was just in atl this time last year and is it near um like the, you know where they have the museums like the african-american museum it's not far from there okay. uh, that's more like auburn avenue uh okay. edgewood area it's more closer to the omni center you know the mm -hmm. omni and the the, where the hawks play the uh the stadium in centennial park Okay. It's yeah. more closer to that area, but it's like a big design center. I just can't think of the name of it. There's one in LA uh, mm -hmm. called the Pacific Design Center. And just basically, you have all these like high end uh, kind of like booths and offices. And, you know, if a chair designer comes in, you know, wholesale to buy everything for their clients, uh, and then, then they can come into your, your office space and you guys can have your showroom. And then they can kind of pick out, you know, what they like and stuff like that. So actually, that brings me to um, another ask. I mean, we're right now putting together um, a, a prospecting list. Um, so if you or anyone that you know, like knows of someone who owns a store, has connections to a store, works at a store. I mean, if you can send us their name and contact so we can have that direct communication. I mean, we want to see this all across the world in every space um, we want to make it accessible to our customers um so take a look at our site juneafrica.com j-o-o-n africa.com if you see something on there that you think would appeal or would fit well in a store that you like um you know send us send us your the stores that you shop at because we we are going to make the calls i mean we're uh we're on the ground we're we're ready to work so yeah I would also say um, if you guys reach out to any, uh, I guess, influencers, like in, I would say this type of market, the African, the house, diaspora, I don't know, creative uh, market, maybe reach out to them and try to uh, collab with them, um, you know, on it through Instagram. Yeah. That could be another idea, but. Um, we have reached a few influencers, but we certainly need to be reaching more. Um, uh, do you guys have any suggestions on you know, not, I mean, it's, we need that valuable input, not just like who to reach out to, but whose, whose feeds do you, um, you know, whose Instagram pages do you go on? Do you appreciate, do you actually want to interact with? And, you know, what do you want to see from us? I mean, do you want to see us like actually putting our designs up or do you want it to just, um, to see how you can use it in your home? You want to see how, you know, is. I mean, you want us to try to rip the wallpaper up so you can see how durable it is. Uh -huh. I mean, that's um, 
that's all valuable feedback I think that we need from the community because right now we're using all of our experience and our marketing and sales experience to make the best possible platform. But um, don't be shy in giving us that feedback, especially if there's something that you see that can be improved because we definitely need that. Absolutely. Let me see if we got any more uh, questions in the chat room. Uh, let's see here. I think there's more comments than, than anything. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys coming on, uh, beautiful ladies coming on, and Ahmed, thank you for coming on as well. Uh, I mean, any any uh, anything you guys want to share in closing? I mean, the the you know the floor is yours. We'll go ahead and uh, close it out. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I mean, the floor is yours. No, we just want to thank you so much for allowing us to join this platform and to share more about our platform. Um, if if any. Thing, just please spread the word. Don't, I will. Yeah, don't forget to follow us, lovely friends of Search for Uhuru in Africa. We're on multiple platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Pinterest. Um, yeah. yeah. And subscribe. Um, you know, go to JuneAfrica.com. Subscribe because that's the best way we can get um, to keep showing you guys our new products and things we're coming out with. Um, and the best way for you to reach us back to let us know what you want to see. Okay. And Ahmed, you too, if you want to put, you know, shout out your information where people can reach out to you if they're interested in some uh, graphic design work. Mm, yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah. You know what, not to cut you off, it's hard to find reliable people in your field who are reliable that will actually like show up and complete the project. And <laughs> it is so hard to find reliable graphic designers website people mm. you know just in general man it's hard to find you know creatives who are reliable but but go ahead no no i think you're right now um i like uh i like how um you no know, just you know to plug june africa one more time i like how uh that is going to be over time giving the platform to for four and two creatives to take something that they have and something that they do maybe as an art or maybe in their free time and kind of actually give it a little bit more structure i um, mean you know com, uh, you know increase the capacity of their network and i think sometimes that's what kind of leads to that anxiety and that that lack of you know whatever but it's different for everyone but no um you know in the in the, in the interim time leading up to my launch um you can catch me on um instagram at the angel king that's all one word um same thing for uh twitter um all one word t-h-e-a-n-g-l-k-i-n-g and um, you know, uh, you can reach out to me that way. And you know, I'm not going to put my email on here, but you know, you can reach uh, once you follow and you know you check out. You know, some of you know. Also, you'll have access to my portfolio that way. And once you check out the work, or if you have any design needs, you know, reach out to me. You know, definitely. Um, I uh, I do work very closely with nonprofits and uh, and black rest on um, grassroots initiatives. You know, I do uh, I do stuff um, pro bono, but I also do stuff you know for profit. Obviously. Oh yeah, I mean you gotta eat, bro. But yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah, eat. yeah. Oh oh. It's, it's, only, it's only after it's only after I've eaten that I take on pro bono stuff. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, it twi I mean, people gotta understand. Like you gotta pay for the service. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, I've done. I've had my fair share of experiences with nonprofits, and you know, folks not wanting to pay you because they, anyway, you know. But anyway, but yeah, I um I encourage um initiatives like this to keep on and to um and to not feel shy about looking out and reaching out to people for experience and for work um at a professional level just because something that they're doing is seen as you know we are the world lovey dovey. You know, you still you still deserve quality work, and um the, the message still needs to get communicated and the skill set still needs to be applied but yeah you know reach out to me once again one more time um that's the angel king on instagram all one word same thing for twitter reach out to me um hello i can hear you okay okay it's a bad echo you guys hear the echo no. Okay. All right, cool. Well, ladies, beautiful ladies, everybody, they love you in the chat room because you guys are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much. And I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, make sure you guys follow me, search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, if you're new to this platform, please subscribe, share the videos, hit the super chat button. That's another thing, too. Uh, YouTube, doing like live tutorials. Oh, yeah. Design tutorials. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that would be cool as well. 
because uh, again, when it comes to African art, for some reason, people just don't don't know how or where to get started. So um, that'd be a great idea too. So search for whoo.com. Uh, make sure you go to dinosamir.com. Make sure you go to uh, amazon.com and search your name, Dinosamir. Please buy and support a book. Once again, Dinosamir, search for Huru. I might come on later on tonight, not sure, but my friend uh, from Sierra Leone is cooking some cassava leaf. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm about to go. Uh, I have my son, I give him something to eat. I'm going to take him uh, back to his mom's house. Then I'm going to go work out. Then I'm going to indulge in some cassava and palm wine and some BSAP, lots of BSAP. I love BSAP. So, <laughs> so, so, so that's the plans for the uh, rest of the day. So, guys, I appreciate you for coming on. Thank you so much. You and you guys, you guys are family. So, anytime you want to come on, announce something, uh, just let me know. Shoot me an email, and you guys are more than welcome to, to come on anytime. Cool. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, I appreciate it. Till next time, peace. Bye, guys. Bye.